So I've just uh, returned um, to Baigiri after being away for almost two months, and uh, and then also a, uh, a sort of a whole contingent of the uh, top of the line um, were away for um, slightly over a month uh, in. Thailand, uh, as, as well as Debbie, there was uh, uh, myself, Hajin Sudanto, uh, who's returned yesterday to uh, the Hermitage, Hajin Karunadamo, Jin Kasapo, Tanga Chana, and Debbie. Uh, we uh, were in Thailand uh, because of the a uh, hundred, uh, it's a celebration or a <coughs> acknowledgement of the um, hundredth year of Ajahn Chah's um, birth. Uh, it was an occasion to mark and, uh, and people um, from all around um, the world, all the branch monasteries uh, were there uh, in Ubon. And uh, and it was actually quite interesting because there was <coughs> a uh, um, along with, uh, of course, all the Thai people who were there. There was a, probably a contingent of almost a hundred people from Singapore, a whole large contingent from Malaysia, and then. Um, quite a large contingent from some of the monasteries in Europe. And uh, there was a group of us from, uh, of lay people from Abhayagiri also uh, there. Uh, so it was, uh, and people made the effort to uh, come and, uh, uh, and um, being in uh, Ajahn Chah's Monastery during that time. Of course, they they gather every year in uh, January as a uh, uh, it's a occasion of marking his uh, his passing, and uh, so it's kind of a a well oiled machine. I haven't been there for several years because uh, I like to be here for the winter retreat, but uh, <coughs> the uh, this year was very special, so I made an effort to go and to take a group along, and and it was quite um, striking, I think. One, how many people were there, but two, how well organized it's gotten to be, uh, so that made for a very peaceful, uh, environment or a very settled environment, um, um, which I thought was extremely appropriate for. Um, I mean, if you're going to kind of honor a uh, great meditation master, it's probably good to do it without creating a whole lot of chaos and confusion. So, so being able to to uh, uh, gather in such large numbers, but do it in a way that's very respectful. Uh, those aspects of gratitude and and uh, and commitment to practice uh, were were really very very strong, uh, really present. And uh, I, I, you get a sense of the um, you know while. Because it's, I think it's hard for in America to sort of think of okay, well, it's like a by year we had three hundred fifty, four hundred people for Ajahn Sumedho's talk on this this past July. So, wow, that's such a big deal. I mean, there's so many people, and uh, uh, at, at Wat Bapong, uh, there were. Uh, uh, during that period of time, uh, there were 1,500 monks living in the monastery and 
6,700 lay people living in the monastery. Um, <laughs> so it's a, the order of things is, is a bit different. And, uh, uh, but then, and they're all camped out in tents, and the, um, uh, uh, it was really interesting, both for the monks and for the lay people. Like, sort of like the, one of the symbols of the, the forest monk is the, the uh, uh, sort of the, the, the umbrella with the mosquito net wrapped around it, and and the, uh, I didn't, I don't know if I saw one. They were all tents, pop-up tents, uh, easier, easier to carry, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of neat, just sort of sign of the changing times. And <clears throat> and they there were um, um, and of course on the not on the out uh, sort of on the there's an outer part of the monastery and then there's sort of the outside the monastery. Uh, outside the monastery is uh, of course is parking and but all sorts of stalls of people selling stuff shows up and but in some once you go in the monastery gate then you've got all sorts of of uh, people who have come um, usually from the different branch monasteries um, not necessarily um, and they'll set up uh, kitchens and and no, uh, this year um, because there's so many people wanted to help, um, I think you had to set up your kitchen for at least three days in order to 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 be there. Otherwise, it was too too transient. Um, so then, people setting up kitchens and uh, um, ma- making food for like all the people who were living in the monastery. Of course, they were preparing food and offering, but then all the people who came in during the day to practice. And oftentimes what would happen is people in town and around the villages nearby, they spend their day at work, and then they get off work and just come to the monastery, grab something to eat at the kitchens, and then go in for evening chanting and meditation and the Dhamma talk. And uh, so then you'd have extra who how, how many thousands hard to tell uh, coming in to uh, to to practice and there the <clears throat> the whole uh, large area in the main meditation hall and there's a flat area under the trees around the meditation hall was filled with people sitting, chanting, meditating, and then all the way out to the kind of the inner gates um, from the very first day was, oftentimes it takes takes many days to you see the the f- kind of crowd building up to get to the to that that that, uh, that kind of the inner gate and uh, but that was right from the first day it was full right up to there. And then at the same, because it's broadcast all around the monastery, then all around the Chedi area, um, memorial to Ajahn Chah, uh, that whole area was filled with people uh, participating in the chanting, meditating, listening to Dhamma talks. And uh, so to me it was very inspiring, I think, to the others who were who were there and quite... Uh, inspiring as well because it's this this uh, expression of faith and devotion um, but it's also it's a, it's a faith and devotion that is um, I think well grounded and well anchored in uh, a devotion to Dhamma devotion to the the uh, to the teachings and the practice uh, so that that uh, uh, there's a, uh, you know, it felt uh, very, yeah, very genuine and very, uh, very real. Uh, so I think it's just renewing our roots 
with uh, uh, with Thailand and uh, and also I think it's quite uh, inspiring to see that uh, say it's over 20 years since Ajahn Chah has passed away and um, rather than um, as oftentimes happens is that uh, the teacher dies or leaves and then the place becomes empty and it's, and uh, and practice kind of deteriorates or ge- degenerates and and it doesn't appear to be the uh, the case uh, at all um, and uh, I was saying also the presence of, of uh, uh, people from other countries was uh, has uh, necessitated the uh, inclusion of uh, different languages in the uh, uh, in the rotation of dhamma talks uh, that they have because they do they do like a dhamma talk in the morning uh, before the meal. Lay people come take the precepts and do a formal meal offering, uh, listen to a Dhamma talk. Uh, then there'd be an a afternoon um, uh, 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 Dhamma practice, Dhamma talk, sitting, Dhamma talk, walking meditation after. Then the evening would be uh, at about six o'clock, evening chanting. Uh, or meditation, even chanting, Dhamma talk. Usually two Dhamma talks in the evening. Uh, and then the last night, uh, or the last day, there was a circumambulation in the afternoon, and, uh, and then uh, a uh, um, in the evening time chanting, and then Dhamma talks through the whole night to the next dawn, uh, and then the meal offering the next next day. And the saying there was fifteen hundred monks in staying in the monastery, <clears throat> and all these sixty seven hundred lay people staying in the monastery. Those were sort of registered, and uh, but then uh, say like at Wat Nanachat, uh, there was eighty monks. Uh, there was a whole contingent. Uh, I think there was. Eight of the Siladars from England, and then um, novices, uh, Anagarikas, Anagarikas uh, at the monastery, plus all sorts of lay people staying at Wat Nanachat. And there's similarly in many um, uh, branch monasteries around. Uh, with e- say within easy driving distance of Wat Pong was where monks were, and people were were staying uh, there to to m- make it easier on Wat Pong. Uh, so it was uh, when it got to be the say the times of the evening practices or the the uh, the circumambulation because the the numbers actually go up. Um, and then the uh, uh, yeah, different uh, um, um, down in kitchens. Um, the uh, there's a Portuguese contingent that were making some kind of Portuguese sweets that were people were were uh, flocking to, and then they. Italians were making. They'd set up a temporary pizza oven and and uh, and a uh, and a. Uh, uh, there, uh, I don't. I didn't because I don't get to go in as a monk. I don't get to go into where all the the kitchens are. <laughs> you know that area where all the dawn is. Just too 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 many lay people and whatnot. But I, I heard after that. They, yeah, they were doing cappuccinos and lattes, and 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 for anybody who showed up, and and pizzas. So, so it's <laughs> that, uh, and there was Ajahn Brija, the Thai monk, who uh, <coughs> who uh, 
has been living in Italy for, I don't know, it must be 24, 25 years now. Uh, he, uh, um, after the, the ceremonies, and I went down to, uh, and actually he's, the, if, if anybody has, has actually looked on, um, um, they were doing Facebook Live all through the, the, uh, the, the ceremonies and teachings and circumambulation. I think it's, and then after it was posted on to YouTube, and uh, and it's all it's actually all there in in YouTube now. And, and, but anyway, there's been Ajahn Preacher was the one who's been organized the whole team of people to and got all the equipment and uh, uh, be able to to both broadcast it and then record it for for people in the future. So because uh, there were. And besides all the Thai talks, there was talks. And this year I gave a talk in English at Wat Papong, which was really strange. And to, <laughs> to be on the Dhamma seat at Wat Papong uh, with all the people in a place that I'm so familiar with and then to be teaching in, in English it felt a bit, a bit, uh, it took me a few minutes to move past the discombobulation phase and, and uh, uh, not revert to, to the Thai language. Um, but uh, you know, there was talks in, several talks in English, um, talk in Italian, talk in uh, Chinese. Um, and so yeah, it was, because uh, there was a really an international um, presence and a, a uh, so that that uh, uh, that sense, uh, and I, so I think it was a really fitting honor to be practicing uh, together and recollecting uh, the uh, the legacy of of our teacher Ajahn Chah, and uh, uh, and realizing that we also belong to a legacy. And we belong to a tradition, and that, tra- and being a part of something that is, uh, you know, really, you know, both in terms of our own, uh, say, direct lineage of and kind of family of monasteries of Ajahn Chah, uh, but then the the, uh, and you realize that it's been, this is how. Buddhism has been passed on f- for 2,600 years uh, is through the commitment uh, uh, of, say, the spiritual faculties of faith, effort, mindfulness, meditation, wisdom. Uh, those spiritual qualities, spiritual faculties that, that the Buddha speaks about as a basis of uh, of, of, uh, uh, of 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 a practice and training that that cultivation of those qualities and and those faculties uh, is what both nourishes our own practice but it also uh, creates the momentum of a of a uh, of a tradition, and uh, um, and because it makes the teachings alive for both uh, us, as in terms of the whether monastic or lay people, that the the uh, uh, the, the teachings become relevant for our daily life and for our daily experience. It's not just a um, a uh, um, you know something that one pays lip service to, or something that one one uh, just worships on a shrine somewhere, uh, but it's something that one engages in in terms of training the heart, training the mind, uh, living the teachings. Uh, so that that uh, uh, like that uh, that is something that. Uh, 
you know, was obvious that, that there is you know, a deep well of, of, uh, uh, of faith, but, it's, uh, but it is actually being uh, implemented and, and uh, being used to, to generate the, the, uh, um, the actual spiritual practice. So that was very, um, yeah, rejuvenating uh, for me personally, and I'm sure for, for many people. Of course, the the uh, oh, that was a uh, that was something that uh, uh, was in that's still fresh in my memory because it was in the uh, uh, it was January twelfth to the seventeenth uh, that the the ceremonies began and uh, and it started with a a ceremony of of uh, dedicating. A shrine that had been made uh, at Ajahn Chah's birthplace, and uh, it's just a uh, kind, of, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's large. I can't remember how tall it would be. Probably forty feet, maybe tall. Hard to tell. You know, it's about as tall. It's kind of a pillar and nice base with lotus flowers, and then um, a nice area around and then with and it's all done in sandstone and then three, three 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 very large sandstone panels uh, like creating walls that were uh, carved to to uh, with stories of Ajahn Chah's life uh, going around to from his because it was it was made at his actual birthplace in his home village, which is just about two two and a half kilometers out the front of of Wat Pa Pong. Uh, that's where Ajahn Chah grew up, and uh, so then uh, Ajahn Liam years ago um, had the foresight to uh, arrange for that place to be. Purchased and protected, and then uh, and then it was over the last probably five six years they've been been working on this this uh, area, making it um, very pleasant and, and spacious, and people can go there and and uh, sit and meditate. And he's also kind of cleaned up and and. The approaches through the village, um, and then what he did for this um, occasion um, was, and uh, it's hard to imagine how many plants. Because what he did was, one he uh, there's the the whole road from the village into Wat Papong, which is kind of a straight shot. He purchased the land on both sides of the road, an extra, I don't know, 15, 20 feet on either side. And then uh, he had the whole thing lined with um, sunflowers, which of course you have to plant them. And then the, it, that's when they come, January is when they come into bloom. So they were all, all these, Kilometers of sunflowers all in bloom. So there's several meters of uh, a couple meters on either side of the road of all these pots of of sunflowers that are all blooming at the same time, all through the village, into Wat Papong, all around the Chedi, all around the the uh, there's a memorial as you come into Wat Papong, and so it's just and it was just a uh, it was a very touching, uh, you know, it's a very simple thing to do, but you can imagine how the amount of work that it took to, to actually do it. And you say, oh yeah, nice idea, have some flowers along the road. But it's, 
tens of thousands probably of, of, of those who would think. Yeah, yeah, I mean tens of thousands of, of, uh, of pots of, of, of sunflowers and they're, what, four or five feet tall. That is quite, quite, you know, it's just really, oh, it's really striking. Uh, that kind of, of, of effort. Uh, and uh, the, um, of course, there was a time for uh, reconnecting, and there was also a time to, well, one also to take, um, uh, say, for myself and the other uh, group from from Abayagiri to, uh, I mean, we weren't just at Wapapong, we went to many other places to, to, uh, yeah, to maintain uh, our connection and uh, and uh, uh, to uh, pay respects to different senior elders and to visit with different people, um, well, say monks, nuns, lay people, and uh, like we uh, we had. Uh, um, you know, oftentimes one of the painful things that one does as a senior monk uh, or an abbot of a monastery is uh, keep up the the uh, connections with the, the the kind of the ecclesiastical administration. <laughs> you know, sort of. Uh, okay, but. So it was arranged to, there's a new Supreme Patriarch of Thailand and uh, never met him, hadn't really heard about him. And uh, so we arranged for our group to go. And we had this delightful time with, uh, with this uh, senior elder uh, who's, um, you know, it must be awful to actually be the supreme patriarch of you know you're at the, up the you're at the top of the the whole sangha and uh, and it and it really is a political position and uh, and you got to deal with all this kind of societal stuff and and um, you know kind of formalities and ritual and ceremony it must be incredibly boring for a monk who's you know who really wants to be a monk and and uh, but anyway we went there i wasn't really sure what to expect and you have to make an appointment and you're you're sort of anybody who goes is sort of has to be in formal attire so they had to they had to dress debbie up and <laughs> Get the uh, um, and uh, other, you know. So it's. Um, I mean, there's nothing for us to do as monks. But, but <laughs> this this is dressed up already, uh, but uh, and then you know you have to wait and you get a slot uh, uh, that you're slotted in. The secretaries and whatnot sort of have you. Uh, plugged in and and uh, and then uh, so we go in, we pay our respects, and we start. To, and they're they actually there's a big sign up and saying, uh, you know, each appointment is the maximum 15 minutes. Do not overstay your time. Um, and uh, so then, you know, yeah, and oftentimes I guess you get shuttled in and shuttled out, and, and we ended up. Spending forty-five minutes with him, and he was uh, his secretary was there. Uh, <coughs> you know, there's people waiting, <laughs> and he said, ah, "They'll wait." You know, and he sat and chatted and talked, and he had all sorts of questions for for us of what we're what 
life was like. And he'd heard about the fires at Abaigiri. He, he wanted to know about it. It was really surprising how many people, you know, both in the Sangha and the uh, the lay community, had heard about the fires and and uh, were really were really concerned and and uh, uh, wanted to hear news straight from the source. And he he was one of them. And uh, and yeah, we just had this very warm connection and and and. We'd, uh, and, you know, we had to leave and we went out. This sort of all felt very warm and fuzzy. And we got, and we were away, I guess we were away for a while during January and then came back into Bangkok and there was a, a big card. And it, I mean, it's just a formal thing, but it was a, a, it was a card from the, Sangharaja, sort of a New Year's greeting that he gives out to everybody, but it was his secretary said, uh, and sent it over and said, you know, His Holiness wanted uh, to to send his greetings to you and just say how much he appreciated the the, uh, the visit. So it was it's really really quite lovely. Similarly, we spent time with the uh, uh, head monk of he's the head monk of. All of the, say, for the Mahanikaya tradition, the uh, um, all the foreign monasteries, I mean, yeah, we kind of fall between the cracks, which is great. But uh, uh, in uh, uh, say, in uh, uh, in terms of title, that's one of his duties is uh, uh, looking after all of the the overseas monasteries. Plus, uh, he looks after the area where, of the northeast of Thailand, where Ajahn Chah lives, and so that he can be of direct service to to Ajahn Chah's monastery. He has an, it's a title that he could have relinquished um, years and years and years ago. Um, and his predecessor, um, uh, and and the former abbot of it, uh, he, he's passed away now, had done the same thing where he he kept this position and and uh, and he inherited it and he's kept it and it's uh, because he really wants to be able to help support Ajahn Chah's monastery. But anyway, yeah, usually these are um, you know formal. Uh, Occasions and and uh, um, but uh, yeah, we ended up spending like three hours there, and and I remember uh, one of the uh, Thai monks who uh, I think it might have even been Ajahn Preacher. I said, "What you know, who who knows him and knows other senior monks?" He's what do you talk about for three hours? And I said, well, I don't know, time just went. You know, we were enjoying the time, and he took us around and showed us this and showed us that, and, you know, and he so made sure that we were well coffeeed up. And <laughs> so it's, uh, that it, uh, you know, just this warm reception, and especially when it's... Uh, you're going as a uh, as a group, um, then and you sort of say, "Oh, it's I mean, you know, usually I go there on my own, and you know I get received personally quite warmly, but then when you go as a a group, then it's sort of, oh yeah, this is this is a monastery, this is a contingent from." Uh, uh, Baigiri. And oftentimes these monasteries in the West, uh, are, you know, often uh, tend to be a, just a, a couple monks trying to, you know, struggle to look after the Thai communities. But say for us, it's it's quite different in the sense that, you know, we have a, a vibrant monastic community, vibrant lay community, and and people want to know about it. They want to to hear. Uh, how it's working 
for us. So that that uh, you know, I think so that sense of, of being able to you know, because sometimes you sort of you know you're here in America and uh, you know where people are interested in practice, but it's not. Uh, it might not be apparent that it's connected to to anything else or to a larger picture, but uh, it is, and people are are interested, and people are um, um, supportive and and uh, um, uh, and inspired by, say, what. Uh, what is happening in in uh, these uh, in these foreign countries, and particularly uh, for us here. So while we were there, we also we had the opportunity to. I mean, of course, I gave various teachings at different places, and and people plugged into that, and both. Our group. Uh, I think this is probably the sanest schedule that I've had since I've been returning. It was a nice uh, balance of being involved in teachings and invitations and pulling back and going, uh, having breaks and and uh, being in in quiet places so that uh, uh, we. Uh, we had a little bit, maybe a little bit less than a week, I guess, of being in Bangkok, and then from the time the we Giri. all arrived, hmm? yeah. and, then and then we went up to Anandagiri, which is uh, the uh, monastery of Ajahn Achalo, who we, um, wanted, wanted to visit, and and because uh, Ajahn Achalo is the monk who oversaw the carving of this statue. And, uh, and of course, with the hall finished and everything in place, it was nice to, to visit him. And he, he would be coming for the opening, um, uh, which is another uh, thing. Uh, the, uh, I finally squeezed a date and a commitment, a commitment and a date from Ajahn Lumpa Liam to come for the opening of the uh, of the hall. Uh, it's been uh, uh, takes uh, takes a long time to get get things pinned down from Lumpa Liam in particular, and so that uh, he'll he will come on about the nineteenth or twentieth of June, and we'll have the opening ceremony on June. 30th, July 1st, weekend. So, uh, so we're going to get things finished here. <laughs> but there'll be, uh, uh, so he'll come with, uh, I invited a senior monk to come come with him, whoever he chooses, uh, an attendant, a translator. The tr- translator would be Ajahn Kevali, the, uh, the, uh, uh, abbot of Wat Nanachat, and uh, Ajahn Jaisaro was committed to come. Ajahn Achalo invited uh, Ajahn Kongrit, uh, who uh, um, he was here in the early days, and uh, uh, he lives in England. Um, he has bases in Europe these days. And uh, uh, Ajahn Pratib, who uh, was here also in the early years, and uh, um, Tankampiro was staying with him um, after being with Ajahn Tan during the, the the rainy season, and shortly after, then uh, he went over to uh, uh, Ajahn Pratib's, which is fairly close by, and uh, he's really liking it there, and Ajahn Pratip asked if he could keep him for the, uh, for the upcoming, upcoming Vasa, so I said, yeah, okay, yeah. So 
he'll come back after the vasa. The, uh, but yeah, so the uh, um, Ajahn, Achalo's monastery was, uh, uh, we were there for the period leading up to, you know, just over the new year. And uh, that was something that was, I think, uh, we heard after that. It was a bit eerie because it's an area that is very naturally quite beautiful. Uh, it's uh, in, in, in Pechibun province, Khao Kha area, which is, uh, it's about at a, it's in a mountainous kind of area. It's at about 800 meters level, 2,500 foot. Level so it's quite green and pretty and lots of farms and and resorts uh, and usually New Year's is this uh, chaos of New Year's parties and loudspeakers and um, fireworks going on off for days um, warming up for the New Year and. Uh, and it was just incredibly quiet. And it was like, yeah, eerily quiet for Thailand. And then uh, uh, we heard after that they've, they've actually implemented um, some kind of uh, actual laws that the police were, were enforcing of keeping the noise levels down so that people can bring in the, the new year quietly. There's been really increasing uh, how do you say, um, both interest and social value placed on going to monasteries at the new year and bringing the new year with chanting and meditation um, rather than with hangovers and <laughs> bruises and uh, bumps that... Uh, typified the typical new year before. So it, it's quite interesting seeing uh, seeing that change in it actually uh, and 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 in hearing from other monks and monasteries that you know, yeah it's, that's really that really is turning into a you know, the, like a positive social value that around the new year that that it's it's a time of of uh, yeah, uh, reflection and, and 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 bringing in quietly. Uh, so that uh, uh, it was interesting to to see that, but it was, uh, of course it was lovely to be in in uh, in that particular monastery. It was cool and and quiet. So originally we were sort of thinking, well, maybe we'll go here, go there, do this and that a little bit, and uh, we got there. So don't want to go anywhere, and just stayed stayed at the monastery and practiced quietly. Uh, we had time to be with, uh, you know, coming, come back to Bangkok, did some more, some more teaching things, and then back out to kind of the countryside. And uh, Ajahn Jayasaro had his 60th birthday and uh, he'd, uh, uh, he had celebrated his birthday by going to, uh, to India and w walking, doing a tudong by himself on his own. Um, uh, Walking from was it from Sarnath? I think it was from Sarnath. I think it was Sarnath, just outside Banaras, uh, to uh, Kusinara, where the the Buddha passed away, and as a uh, a reflection of his own aging process, and and uh, uh, so that uh, that was, uh, 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 and he's a a monk who is. Uh, 
Uh, of course, I've known for a long time, and, and uh, uh, he's he's a monk who's uh, very skilled at teaching both in Thai and in English, and and uh, his many books, and and uh, and of course he's just completed the r- writing of the. Uh, uh, kind of biography of Ajahn Chah, which will, it, I think it arrives here on Monday. And uh, so that, uh, and, uh, he's asked that we make them available sort of simul- simultaneous around the different monasteries on Magapuja, which would be full moon of February, so it'll be in a month. Yeah. Anyway, they uh, they do exist, and uh, they should be here. And uh, anyway, he's he's somebody who is has a a large following. He t- teaches, and usually there's in when he's teaching in Thailand, be a lot of people showing him. So he's very well known. But then, just taking the time to step out of the whole realm of being a somebody and just being, he, he said he just loved it, being a, a wandering ascetic in, in northern India and uh, um, having no, um, not sure where he's going to uh, spend the night, not sure where he's going to get food, and just to be that, living as a, uh, a mendicant, uh, and uh, yeah, disciple of the Buddha, and he found it very uh, rejuvenating for himself. Um, and uh, so he actually came back to town like the day before his birthday, and then, uh, of course, people. We showed up in the afternoon. And there was also ship people for the uh, the morning and uh, you know, just see, see these uh, you know one of the things of of uh, say for myself especially coming back together paying respects to Ajahn Chah um, you know realizing that that uh, so many people um, I've uh, you know, both monastics who I've known for for so long, Lumpur um, Samedo, Ajahn Viradamu, who I traveled with in Sri Lanka and India before the, going to Thailand. So I've known them for 44 years, and 44, 45 years, and it's this very long, deep connection, and just to spend time with them. And uh, then Ajahn Sujito joined us in southern India for a week. And just having, uh, you know, quite an informal time to be together. And then being in Thailand with, say, monks like Ajahn Chai Saro, Ajahn Yanadamo, Ajahn uh, Kemanando, uh, uh, Ajahn Preecha, um, who's been a, I've known him since he was a, an, like an anagarika. He was, a, I don't know, he was maybe 12 years old. And so that uh, these long connections with, long-term connections with people. Similarly with the lay community, you know, meeting people who I've... Uh, just known for such a long time. There's a uh, a woman who I've known for a long time, and she she started coming to Wat Nana Chat with her mother uh, when she was about nine years old, and that would have been in 1976. Mm-hmm. And so I've known her all that time and maintained a connection over these years, and she's living in a, uh, a Dhamma community. Um, and they, uh, 
invited me and our group to stop, and they had this wonderful kind of reception for us, and, and uh, just discussing Dhamma and, and uh, uh, encouraging them as, as a lay community, practicing Dhamma and uh, maintaining a connection with study and and practice. Uh, it's the uh, these because uh, in I think that's in, in Thailand just seeing the the uh, <coughs> diversity of expression of uh, uh, of a Buddhist life uh, and, uh, and whether it's the say forest monasteries or city monasteries um, or the nuns' communities. That I, I gave a talk at uh, Mechi Sansanese, and it's this uh, wonderful kind of reception and connection. Well, of course, I've had a connection with them for a long, long time. And, uh, and then lay communities that are, are really uh, committed to practice. Um, uh, uh, things that uh, and people from all walks of life and and uh, um, different um, ways of like there was I gave her a, a a retreat a day long retreat at a, 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 a Sayam Intercontinental Hotel and it was is disappointed that the ballroom wasn't available because it was it had already been been uh, it would been it been booked months and months ahead when we realized that he invited me to give the talk so we had a smaller room which was not small it was bigger than this <laughs> uh, with another adjacent room the same size so that there was it was broadcast into the next room so the and trying to do walking meditation, and the, the the hall was full, so you're doing walking meditation out into the kind of lobby area, and there was, you know, kind of coffee machines and 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 people milling around a bit, and we're doing walking meditation through. It was, you know, it was kind of weird, but it was really nice. It was really interesting. It was sort of like there's just example of Dhamma practice in the middle of the city, and it really was one, right in one of the big financial areas, tourist areas, one of the biggest, big hotels of, of, of Bangkok, and people are practicing meditation, practicing Dhamma, and taking interest in the teachings. People were really, it was a really settled group. It took a while to settle in the morning. By the afternoon, it was really it's really settled. It's really interesting, you know. And then, you know, little, uh, 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 you know, just little places out, out in like where we went to, to uh, this lay community that's practicing. This thing. They're building up a place for themselves, and it's both a, a dhamma practice, and they're they've got some odds and ends that they're using as making a livelihood. So it's like a a, a dhamma a very communion, communal, commune situation where they're all living together, pooling their resources and practicing, supporting each other in Dhamma practice. And the, uh, or we went out to uh, um, a place that I had, had built out on the outside, right on the border of Burma, inside a national park, um, and um, we actually have legal right to be there uh, and uh, as a monastery and it's uh, uh, and it's been it, it's it, it's it's very difficult to access um, and and the agent uh, that's where agent agent Siri Panyo, who was with us through the through the uh, the range retreat this past past year uh, it's his monastery and uh, we all went out there of course it turned into a, a, 
a bigger thing than a, f a few monks and a couple lay people going out to a monastery for a few days. It was ended up with ten off-road vehicles uh, filled with people, and then we, and that's because that's what y y your ordinary ordinary uh, uh, vehicles can't can't really uh, can't really make, it, which makes it incredibly quiet and protected, and so that's a say like another kind of flavor of of Dhamma practice that there is you know there's all these different then yeah you know, diversity of expression of of uh, um, uh, within within a uh, uh, especially it's easy I think to oh Thai Theravada Buddhism it's sort of it's a thing well it's not a thing it's a lot of things. Uh, a lot of ways of expression, and a lot of ways of uh, manifesting uh, the uh, uh, yeah the teachings of the of the Buddha. I think that's one of the things that is both inspiring and probably empowering in realizing that you know we've got uh, we've got different ways of accessing the practice, accessing the tr truth of the practice, and uh, learn how to explore it and to trust it. Um, and, uh, and that's a, uh, you know, that's a wonderful gift for us living in, here in, uh, uh, here in America, so that we're, uh, again, say, increased confidence in in our own practice and, and our own expression of the practice. So those are a few thoughts from a jet-lagged, addled mind, and uh, we'll uh, leave it leave it for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs>